He goes after a fastball and rocks it to deep right. And that ball rifled in the alley, and this will tie the game. He caught it. What a catch. It's gone. A game winner. The story of Dominican baseball is written in the DNA of every one of its children who ever picked up a bat and a ball. I love it. They live it. They live for baseball because from the time they wake up, all they want to do is go play. And the story of Vladimir Guerrero is that of a boy who endured crushing poverty while always striving for a better way of life. You go through a lot, but you need to keep moving forward. We have to know how to survive because you can't just lay down and die. You need to work for what you want. When you fall, God always gives you an opportunity. Vlad found his opportunity through baseball and seemed destined for something special from the start. He loved baseball from an early age. He has always been that way. It seemed that God wanted him to do it because he never stopped. He always had that dream. And this little boy from the small Dominican village went on to do what most can only dream of. I knew we had signed a good player with good qualities, but the level Vladimir reached, the type of player that he is, I think that no one could have predicted that. And he has forever left the children of his hometown with the legend of Vladimir Guerrero. Guerrero hits him well, deep to left. In the air, right center field, Guerrero dives and makes an incredible catch! Here, all the mothers want their kids to be just like Vladimir Guerrero. This is Vladimir Guerrero before the bigs. Vladimir Guerrero comes from the diminutive town of Don Gregorio in the southern region of the Dominican Republic. A town which is made up of modest homes, beautiful beaches, green pastures, and two visible passions within the residents. The first is merengue, which on a Friday night can be heard on just about every street corner. And the second is baseball which at any moment can be seen anywhere, whether it is in the street, in a sandlot, or at the local diamond. The tiny village town of Don Gregorio is part of a hilly coastal region of the country called Nisao Bani. Located 40 miles southwest of the capital, Santo Domingo, Nisao is one of the Dominican's hidden gems for its beautiful scenery, as well as the number of major leaguers it has produced. Like Davy Cruz, Juan Uribe, Miguel Tejada, and Vlad's brother, Wilton Guerrero. With only 12,000 residents, 20% of whom make less than $1 a day, the people have come to rely on baseball as an escape from their harsh way of life. But the district's economy is still mainly dependent on farming and fishing. The lifestyle, as you would say, what we do here is farming and nothing else in Nisao. There aren't any industries. There isn't anything. What we do have is lots of valleys and, like I said, agriculture. We didn't have any roads. They would always say they were going to make them, but they would never do it. So we grew up walking on the gravel from our house to the baseball field or to the river. Vlad was one of nine children living in a two-bedroom house with his mother, Altagracia. And although they were a very tight-knit family, the circumstances they lived in left much to be desired. Well, there has never been a lot of electricity, and we would only have water sometimes. When there wasn't any water, we would have to go get some so that we could bathe. So we would go to the river and bring water back to cook with, and for the family to shower with. The family's home, it was just a little down the road from mine. It was a little home, made of wood and tin. They did not have any money, so the tin roof was very bad. It was so bad that when it would rain, so much water would come in that it would be as wet inside as it was outside. With his family struggling to survive, Vlad 
will be forced to take on much of the burden, even as a young boy. My father had cows, donkeys, and horses. We would have to wake up at four in the morning every day to go. It was very difficult because we would wake up so early and then have to walk 30 kilometers to get there. It has helped me since I was only five, six, seven years old, and I would have to use all my strength to handle these goats, who were so much bigger than I was. I think that's where a lot of my strength comes from when I'm hitting. He would have to pull them really hard, like this, and from it, blisters would appear and his hands would become tough. Of course, I think it helped me a lot. I bat without gloves now, and I think that comes from having to pull on the goats with my bare hands. While these times did much to build Vlad's physical strength and character, many trials still laid ahead, as a crushing financial strains would soon tear his family apart. He felt, you know, how a kid feels when your mom is far away. My mom. I want my mom. I want to be close to her. At 6'4 and 235 pounds, Vladimir Guerrero is one of the giants of today's game. An imposing presence every time he comes to the plate, he crushes balls with power that few others possess. But Vlad has always had the advantage of size. As a child, he was nicknamed La Mula meaning the mule, because of the great portions of food his mother would prepare for him. Yes, this was her kitchen where she cooked. She would make her fish and fry her meat. Lots of healthy meals. She would make arepas, and that is the main reason why he's so tall and strong. It's because of his mom. She worked hard to cook so that her kids would enjoy the food. His mother would always cook bullo de guayica. They say that's where he got his strength from and why he's always been able to throw the ball further than anyone else. I always ate a lot. I spent most of my time in the kitchen. Sometimes, when my mom would go out, I would have to cook the food. I think that's why I came out so much bigger than everyone else. While I would be stirring the rice, I would from time to time take a little out for myself. Like most Dominican families, there were two things that consistently brought the Guerrero family together the meals they shared, and on a much deeper level, their faith. As far as religion, Christianity has always been important to him. His mom is an evangelic, like we call it here, and everyone else in the family is evangelical also. My faith in God definitely comes from my family, being that my mom and my aunts are all evangelic. We would always spend our Sundays talking about God and the Bible, and that's when I was the happiest. As the central figure in Vlad's life, his mother, Altagracia, did much to shape him into the man he is today. But as a child, times grew more difficult for Vlad and his family, forcing them to make even more sacrifices. Altagracia took a job in Venezuela, having no contact with Vlad for years at a time, outside of occasional conversations on a payphone. She was always leaving the country to go to work so she could support her kids. She would have to go to Venezuela, and a lot of the time, Two years would go by before her kids could see her again. Yeah, it was hard, his mom not being there. He felt, you know, how a kid feels when your mom is far away. My mom, I want my mom. I want to be close to her. Of course, it was very difficult, being that I was only five years old and my oldest brother, Eliaser, was only seven. With his mother over a thousand miles away, Rob became dependent on his aunts and uncles and spent most of his free time with his cousins. Well, our family had a lot of goats, and we would have to take them to graze at the river. Once we were there, we would let them free so we could go play and have a crazy time. When we would get home, we would get a pretty good whipping sometimes, because we would be missing a goat. So then we would have to go back and try and find them, because usually they would get onto other people's property. He spent a lot of time with us, his cousins, his family. In this area, he really liked to play La Plata. The game of La Placa is native to the Dominican Republic and in Vlad's hometown of Nisao. It is one of the most popular pastimes among young boys. Well, La Placa is a game where you put your bat here and there's a small plate there. The other team throws the ball like this really hard. They try to get the points by hitting the plate. So you need to swing at the ball and hit it off the floor so that it does not knock the plate over. <laughs> 
The goal of La Placa is to not let the plate fall. If it falls down, then you're out, and the other team gets to bat again. If you hit the ball, you score runs. And we would go up to 12, or 16, or 26, it depends. But you always count by twos. Two, four, six. <laughs> It has helped because sometimes you don't know how the pitcher is going to throw the ball. Sometimes he throws it high and the catcher would get the ball and try and knock the plate down from behind. And sometimes it would be on the floor or way outside. And that probably helps me today, to be able to hit balls that are thrown high or any bad balls. This is probably why I don't really have a strike zone. He loved baseball from an early age. He has always been that way. It seemed that God wanted him to do it because he never stopped. He always had that dream. There's something mystical about baseball in the Dominican Republic. It is what puts a bat in the hands of any boy who is old enough to walk. And it is perhaps this inexplicable force which first brought baseball to Vlad. He got started by those in the family, older than him. Yeah, he learned from his cousin and his oldest brother, Eliezer. He loved baseball from an early age. He has always been that way. It seemed that God wanted him to do it because he never stopped. He always had that dream. Well, I started playing when I was five years old, and I don't think that I ever thought about getting signed. Because even though a lot of us played, no one from this area had ever been signed. So I looked up to guys like Mondesi and Moises Alou, and although I wasn't able to see them play, I could hear them on the radio when they were here in the Dominican leagues. While Vlad definitely had the desire and the passion to play the game, he did not always have conventional means to facilitate this. The place where he would play was just a wide open field, no fence. It wasn't a place where a league would play, like this one. When they were young, they used to play there all the time. We would use gloves made out of cardboard because we did not have the necessary means to buy a glove or even make a proper one. And we would not have a bat either. So we would have to find a stick, we would use a bottle to make it, we would use the glass to sand it down. Vlad was willing to do whatever it took to play baseball. And this was just more evidence of the fire that burned inside of him. A fire that would be fueled by three-hour bus rides to the Dodger Baseball Academy, where he would drop off home-cooked meals for his brother Wilton, who was attending the academy at the time. These exhausting trips, along with seeing his own brother accomplish what he was determined to achieve, only served as more motivation to keep striving. And while Vlad would get his own shot with the Dodgers, they were reluctant to sign him, and Vlad grew impatient, eventually leaving the academy. But he would get another chance when Arturo de Freitas entered the picture. During the 1993 season, I was the director of the Montreal Expo Baseball Academy here in the Mendoza region of Santo Domingo. And we had a scout named Victor Franco who called uh, to tell me that there was a player that had sufficient qualities to be signed. Vlad finally had another shot with a new team, but an injury to his leg would seriously threaten his chances. I had already pulled a muscle in my leg before going to the practice, and when Victor Franco took me, I told him that I can run the bases, but I didn't know how my leg would act. I was sitting behind home plate watching him hit, and as he was running towards first, he re-injured the muscle. What happened was that I was able to run on that play but I didn't realize that I would have to bat a second time. So when I went to bat, I hit a home run, but they saw me limping around and they took me out. But the Expo still saw Vlad's potential and gave him another chance, deciding to let him continue with the tryout. 
We kept on checking him during the routine that we do, and he ran very well. Being a guy uh, 6'2 in a stature and so thin, he ran uh, the 16, about 6'8, and he kept impressing us with uh, his style of play. They could have signed me that same day, but since I was injured, they thought that I was going to continue to get injured. So they said I could stay for one month, and I said all right. And thank God I got a chance to start. And I began to hit right away, and from there came the numbers. I hit three something and five home runs and made the team. Earning a shot at the Expos Academy, Vlad now had a chance to show the extent of his capabilities, and he made the most of it. We were having a practice game to take a look at the guys who were here, and he made himself seen right away, because on a hit to the right field, he got the ball and threw the runner out at first. That impressed me a lot. And Vlad would continue to impress at the academy, hitting 333 in the Dominican Summer League in 1993. He also began the 94 season in the Summer League, but after batting 424 and hitting 12 home runs over the first 25 games, he quickly earned his ticket to the States. Well, the town was very content, happy to have it because it's a small town and no one imagined that a player from this location would ever have that kind of success that he was able to have in the big leagues. After tearing through the Dominican Summer Leagues, Vlad was now on the fast track in the Expos farm system. He finished his 94 season in the Gulf Coast League, hitting 314, including 21 extra base hits over 37 games. But his breakout season would come in 1996. While playing for the Harrisburg Senators in the Eastern League, he led the team to the league championship with a 360 batting average, becoming the league MVP along the way. With his stellar play in the minors came the opportunity that Vlad always dreamed of, when Expos manager and fellow Dominican Felipe Alo invited him to spring training in 1997. Everyone was waiting to see this phenomenon, and indeed he did turn out to be just that. He showed his grand arm and his grand batting. No one could strike him out. 97 will be Vlad's year, and his exceptional play would earn him a major league contract. I could see an expression of satisfaction on his face, because I know that Dominican players in general, in baseball, what they want is to sign a contract because it's the first step. Well, imagine. Our reaction was one of lots of joy when we were told that he made it. Imagine everyone. You could always see his baseball skills and that he was going to make it, and how badly he wanted to make it. But he still had trials he would encounter off the field. I believe that the main barrier that Vladimir faced was the language. I believe that when he would play, he would forget everything. He would only play baseball. But outside the field, I believe that the language was uh, his main obstacle. But Vlad had a fellow countryman on the team, in Pedro Martinez who would help him cope with the culture shock. Pedro has always protected the guys that surround him, and I know that uh, he helped Vladimir a lot by taking him out to eat and things like that. I thought of him as my dad. My first year in 97, we lived together and shared a lot, since I was a rookie and didn't know anything about Montreal. Seven years later, and now with the Angels, Vlad's career would come full circle as he found himself squaring off with Pedro and the Red Sox. But what a great matchup between two Dominican dandies, Vladimir Guerrero and Pedro Martinez, one who's won a Cy Young and maybe one who will be an MVP. It was my first year in Anaheim. You feel like you just want to do your job and you tell yourself that you can do your job. On that day, all I wanted to do was get a hit. Guerrero hits him well. And thanks to God, I had nine RBIs. That's belted! Deep! Look at this! Vladimir Guerrero with all eight RBIs! Base hit left field! That's an angel record! Nine RBIs for Vladimir Guerrero! 
I've never seen a performance like this from a batter in one game. That magical night was just part of an incredible year that would earn Vlad the American League MVP, an honor that he would share with his people of Nisal. His people waited for the award in the National League, but it did not happen. And now in the American, he had won it, and we had a party. We celebrated big time. We had waited a long time for this. Very proud. The town felt very proud. They had parties, they had everything. He deserved it. He deserved to be where he was. Well, the town was very content, happy to have it, because it's a small town, and no one imagined that a player from this location would ever have that kind of success that he was able to have in the big leagues. The town felt proud. Everyone ran into the streets to enjoy and congratulate him and, and ask God that it would always be that way. Well, there was a lot of emotion. Imagine the town here. A lot of us gathered to celebrate for him and for the town to reclaim him. Through all the success, Vlad has not forgotten where he is from, always putting his hometown first. Well, he's done various things purchased a lot of land, purchased cows. He has planted a lot of crops also. He has these supermarkets, he has a block factory, and many fields for the guys here to work in. He has done a lot for the town. Lots of jobs in his factory, on his land. Almost everyone works in his factory. While Vlad has done all he can to help each and every person in the town, he has paid particularly close attention to those following in his own footsteps. Well, in these times, it is difficult. If we didn't have his help, it would be really hard to gather the guys to practice baseball. He helps the league in every way he can. Sports equipment, bats, and everything. Rides for the youngsters to different locations in the country. I think that if it were not for him, many of these kids would be on the streets. I don't know. Drugs? Alcohol? For everything he has accomplished, this little boy from Nisau with a passion for baseball has left an indelible mark on the lives of the people still there. Vladimir Guerrero has become, I would say, the king in this area. And not just because he's in the big leagues or all like that, but because the good person that he has become after making all the money that he was able to make. For us Dominicans, that is God. My favorite baseball player is Vladimir Guerrero because he has accomplished something that has awoken the Dominican players to keep fighting. 